Okay, welcome to the Crow Discovery Project. Uh, I have been waiting since the fall of 2012 to make the clip that I'm going to make here today. Uh, the lunar wave has been confirmed by two additional videos, which means I have filmed it. The German footage which I have posted has been shown, which is not quite as good as what we have now. Two additional people have filmed this, and up here Y2 user Richard 205 Maria filmed it on 1109, and he pointed me to James Hannon. And there is the clip title for James Hannon, and he published on June 15, 2013. So he's had this clip up quite a while, and I just was not aware of it. What we have here is bulletproof confirmation that there is, in fact, a lunar wave event going on, and it has been going on for some time. Um, I've put up with an endless line of abuse and people telling me I'm crazy and all kinds of stuff. Well, that kind of ends today. Um, one of the main arguments was, oh, you need two cameras. It's always your equipment. And even though I took pains to show that this was not an equipment-related event, we now have two additional videographers from two different parts of the country with two completely different systems who have filmed this. So... Um, I'll tell you the story of what happened on 11-9, which ironically is coded to 9-11, um, and why I was not able to film that night. So here we go. Okay, so on 11-9, uh, we went out to go see if we were going to be able to film the moon. I was sick, and uh, I, was gonna, I didn't feel good, but I was going to do it, and this is what we saw. Now, here's a chem plane leaving non-persistent trails. But what was unusual about this chem plane is earlier in his run, and I have images of it that I will show you, he left a very persistent chem trail, which lasted for many hours after he laid it, and then started immediately after spraying the way you see now, all in the same run. Another plane had come in and turned on very briefly for like a mile he turned on, and what they did is they formed an X in the sky right over the top of us. Well, Croet and I got to talking because we have not seen persistent chemtrails basically since I got the telephoto lens. And uh, we were discussing whether or not this X that you're looking at here, which got much wider and, again, lasted for many hours, was marking us. It was marking us as a spot to close the sky because the moon was going to be refreshed or whatever that wave is on the moon that night. Here's the end of the chemtrail. As it peters off there, the, the video footage that I just showed you picks up where he starts spraying the non-persistent chemtrail. This, this X that they drew over us uh, lasted for until it was dark, basically. And within two hours of this X being laid over us, the entire sky became milky white and was closed. And there was no way that we could film the moon because we couldn't even see stars. Um, and again, you know, we were wondering, it just, the whole thing seemed so weird that we got out the camera and filmed this, and we're literally saying, I wonder if that X is targeting where we are uh, as a place to block so that we cannot film the moon. Um, we've thought about this a lot. Don't know if it's true, but this is all pretty coincidental, and I don't believe in coincidence. There's the plane after it started spraying the non-persistent trails. So the same night that they do this and close our sky, uh, Rich is able to film the wave. Anyhow, here is Rich's footage. Um, this is the original size, and I'll give you another view of it. There went the wave there. Um, proof positive is what it is. I mean, you can't explain this away. I'll let you have another look, and then what I'm going to do is load the video up. This is slow mode. He slows it down here. But, uh, you know, i got to thank you, Rich, for doing the work and capturing this and knowing enough not to delete the clip. So here I've enlarged the view, and you'll see there's the wave coming in. And you get another view right before he cuts away. I'm not sure if that's the second wave or whether he's cut the clip. It looks like there may be a cut there. I'm just not sure. Um, but there is no denying that that is the wave, and it is the closest shot we've seen of the wave because I film wide. And then we also have the other gentleman who's filmed. And I will leave links to both these clips and the other one that you haven't seen in the description of this video. Anyhow, let's close this with the best footage we have of the lunar wave and the footage that proves that it's not equipment and proves that it is local to the moon. So here we go. That circle is showing in uh, unmanipulated that there is a pulse that's occurring right there. When I throw the filters on it, 
uh, you'll be able to definitely see that there, just as the wave begins, uh, it's like a blast or something hits right there, and you can see by the curvature of the blast uh, that it's curving around a sphere. I call it a pulse, I guess is a better word than blast to describe it. There it was forwards and backwards. So now I'm going to manipulate the heck out of it to try to give a very good view. Here we go down in the lower left, there's the pulse starting. You can see the curvature as it goes around the curvature of the moon. And this last filter that I run, uh, you'll really distinctly be able to see what's going on here. There it is. I mean, it's incredible. Every time I go back and look at this footage, I'm blown away because I don't know what I'm looking at. So here's the original footage from September of 2012. And you notice that the frame went out of the wave went out of frame. That has always been proof that this was not equipment related, but now I don't have to argue that anymore. Um, the truth is coming out. Um, all I can tell you is that there is a wave, almost always a double wave, wave that envelops the entire lunar globe. Um, we deserve to know what that is. We deserve to know what's going on above our heads, and there's no denying that it's real anymore. So there it is. Cheers.